I'm not here to play with you, son. I wish you would! Go ahead! Go ahead! Go ahead, you got me fired up, son. Hey, where are you? I can't hear you! Yes, sir! Huh? Huh? Yes, sir! There you go. We're gonna have some fun today. Two things you're allowed to do today, breathe and blink. Everything else is on my command. You do what I tell you to do, when I tell you to do it. You hear what I'm saying? I am your solution. Down! Up! Now, Raymond's backstage boot camp was only half of the plan. We also took the boys to the Harvey, Illinois prison, where they were treated just like any other inmate. And we hoped that the experience would scare them straight. Boom! Follow me! Going on a little trip today. All right, let's go. Let's go, let's go. Once you get fingerprinted, photos, all the information in the system, you get one phone call. You're going to take this toothbrush? You're going to start scrubbing this thing? When you go to jail, that's all you are, just another number. Could it look like what you used to living in at home? Start up, sir! Hey, I'm 21 years old, you know, and it's like a This is where you're headed, young man. I promise you. Well, yesterday, our first guest, Laura, told us that her 10-year-old son's violent behavior has become too much to bear. Take a look. Now, Laura says her 10-year-old son steals, sets fires, is currently on probation for breaking and entering. How old is he? He's 10 years old. 10. Where did he break and enter? Like somebody... Um, you know what? He broke into my neighbor's house, Jen Jenny. He, um, he broke in there with some of his friends. They stole some stuff. And then a couple days later, the sheriff's department was going through my apartment complex looking for us. He's come after you, right? Yes, he's come after me. If I ask him, Quentin, can he help me? He will not help me. He'll start throwing shoes, he'll throw pillows, he'll throw whatever, whatever in his reach at me just so that he doesn't help me do anything. He's broken two kids' noses. He, he busted two kids' noses at school. You know, he said he's not afraid of anything, especially Raymond Moses. Here's 10-year-old Quentin. <laughs> Broke two kids' noses. For what? What'd they do? Call me names. What'd they, what they call you? Some, some will call me Courtney Sue. Do the courtroom like a little wussy and run up and I punch So you punch them? I take away his TV, his PlayStation. Um, he gets grounded. He can't go outside. He don't have his friends. I take the belt to him. He'll take it from me. Uh -huh. He's not like I don't do anything. I got a program going. 24-hour hotline, 1-800, whoop your kid's ass. I will take his ass off, bring your ass up. When did you start shoving your mom? You just, like, come after her and shove her and punch her, right? When she gets me You know who's here. Raymond Moses is here. <laughs> you got? Show me. Tough guy. Hey, tough guy. Come on. You, you tell me where you're going. No, it ain't you. No, you ain't going to Blue Gate. You're going to jail, son. You think you're going to little 8 by 10 cell. He's, what, 10 years old? He's 10 years old, Jenny. And how did it go yesterday? You went along the trip, right? It helped out a lot. His whole attitude changed by the time we got back to the hotel. His whole attitude changed. He's not disrespecting me. He wasn't talking trash to me. He just laid down, watched TV, and then went to sleep. No, that was, that's great. Well, you know, that, that, you know, you know what? I think, I think yesterday it really shocked him. You know, as as they see the jails and stuff on TV, it's not reality. He saw reality yesterday with Raymond Moses. Well, because he was, uh... well, you know, Clinton told us he wasn't afraid of the police, but let's see how he did in a real prison with real cops. Watch this. Here we go! Here we go! 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 go. Follow me. Lead the way, sir! Lead the way! That's the real right there. I'm the door. Is it clean in here? Sir, no, sir! Is it nice in here? Sir, no, sir! Scrub! 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 Remember, this is your home now. So what are we going to change? Today, sir! Why? Think about what got you here today. And think about what you need to do to turn and make that about face, you understand? Oh, here's 10-year-old Quentin back.
So you look a little different than yesterday, a little different attitude, and was it scary over there? Yes, ma'am. Now, oh, I like that. <laughs> what was the scariest part? The scariest part was seeing the prisoners, ma'am. Seeing the prisoners? There are both men and women there, huh? Because you know that they're in there. You you got to leave yesterday, but they have to stay there, right? So what are you going to do different now after? Change my attitude towards my mom. Yeah. <laughs> well, as you saw on the tape, boot camp instructors Raymond Moses, Mike Williams, and Harry Candy also made an effort to put the boys on the right track. Take a look. Stand by right in there. That's your new home. Stand by right there. Face that way. I want your door fit right now on me. I dare you. You keep making these poor choices. This is where you're going to be. You understand? Come on. Show me what you got, boy. Show me what you got. Let me hear it. Come on. Yes, huh? Yes, sir. You're weak, son. You're weak. Uh, please welcome back Raymond Moses, Mike Williams, and Mary Jane. Good job. I'm proud of you. Okay? I'm proud of you. You did a good job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a different guy than what we saw yesterday. No, we... he's the same kid. He's just really brought the true kid back out. Can this stay? I mean, he seems to oh, really want to make Oh, it because like I said, it's always been there. It's just been covered up. It's been covered up with the negative parts of the environment that he's been in. Like Mom said, she took the biggest step by saying, I do got to change. I do got to yeah. change my ways. And that's the biggest part with us being parents is realizing that we got to make the changes to show our kids to change. You know, people always see Raymond and, and these guys come out and yell and get in their face. That just gets their attention. Really. Right. But it's all about getting their attention and bringing out that good kid and building it up and building it up and teaching them to keep that good kid back up. Yeah. Now, when we come back, remember Daniel? He was only 12 years old, but he was already experimenting with dangerous drugs and threatening his mom. Is he still the same boy today? Find out next. <laughs> I have to block off his punches because I'm not talking about little, little, little punches. I'm talking about big punches. You got two seconds to get your rear end off this stage. I got a size 14 that's going to be right behind you. You understand that? Go! Get out of here! Go! Get out of here! Get out back there! With your choices, this is where you're headed. This is what we call the let you see reality. What's in your... Yeah. Oh, you would. So you're taking steroids? Yeah. You smoking weed? Yeah. Huh? Where are you getting weed? You're like 12 years old. Where do you get it? Huh? Where do you get it? I get it from kids around my park. What do you say to your mom? You call your mom names. Call her this yeah. Raymond, Mike, Harry, come on out here. You understand? All I got to say is we're going to have some fun today. Oh, boy. So, uh, how did it go yesterday? Pretty good. Yeah? He, he promises he's going to go back to school, and I promised him I'm not going to yell as much. He says I yelled too much at him. Yeah. <laughs> well, Josh told us the kids in school are afraid of him, but let's see how the inmates felt when they met him in jail. Watch this. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Lead the way, child, lead the way. Let's go, step it out. Is this how you want to leave? Okay. We don't play games inside these cells, you understand that? Seven feet wide, nine feet long. You better wake up and realize what you have. You're going to start scrubbing this sink, start scrubbing the toilet. See that? Come here. You see how you want to be a cellmate? I can take you to a youth prison right now where kids your same age are serving six months to 20 to life sentences. All right, stand by right here. You got a toothbrush? You better wake up and realize what you have. Because you know what? It's too late when you lost. Oh, I love you. I'm an angel. 
12 year old Josh is back. Oh, Josh. What do you have in your hand? A letter for Raymond Moses. A letter? Thank you. Thank a thank you, you note? Do you want to you wanna give it to him? Oh, it's right here. For every one of us back there. Huh? For all every, the boys. All, all the boys signed it? Why don't you go give it to him? Raymond's right here. Thanks. Right. Hey, you did a good job. I'm proud of you, okay? Okay. What's in there? Can you tell us what's in there? What were you thanking him for the most? For straightening us out. For straightening you out? Yeah. Was scary in there, huh? Yes. Yeah. You don't want to. So what? What are you doing different now? Because you were doing uh, steroids. And... Yes, ma'am. Or is that the last of it? Yes. No more steroids. Yes, ma'am. No more wings. Yes. Steroids. <laughs> the good news is, I got a feeling your mom is willing to make some changes too. What would you like? What would be the best thing for you to be to be different when you get home? Stop yelling at me. Yeah, yeah. You know, if that's what he sees, that's what he's going to do. So, And you're willing to do that? That's mm -hmm. great. Because that's going to make a big difference when you get back home. Well, let me talk to Lisa here, who said that her 10-year-old son takes his anger out on her, her children, even small animals. What? Well, our next guest, Lisa, really has her hands full. She says her son may be only 10 years old, but he's not afraid to fight boys nearly twice his size. I have to block off his punches because I'm not talking about little, little, little punches. I'm talking about big punches. Here's 10-year-old Daniel. <laughs> he walks out here going like this. Oh, no, at home it's like, what's up, bitch? Really? What's, what's up, you hoe? You call it a B word? Yeah. Oh, you do? How come? I feel like it. You smoke weed? Yeah. Therapy obviously hasn't worked. Counseling hasn't worked. Parenting classes have not worked. Well, maybe Jill, Jill, maybe Jill will worked. make a difference because he's going. Let's get Raymond. Let's... Yeah. I want you to throw a fit right now on me. I dare you. I dare you. You know why? You know why? Because you know better. You got two seconds to get your rear end off this stage. Otherwise, guess what? I got a size 14 that's going to be right behind you. You understand that? No! Oh, boy. By the way, Raymond was looking at that card. You know you made him cry with that card? You see, Raymond? Did that sort of tear it up a little bit? That's what All the boys signed it? That's what it's all about. That's what you do it for. That's what you do it for. So, Lisa, how, uh, how was it for you yesterday? I see the beginning of a changed little boy. Yeah? Um, I guess he didn't realize. He didn't realize where he was headed. He apologized um, last night at the hotel. He was ready to say something. I could tell it's going to end with the B word, but he caught himself. He started and, to call you names because he was calling you names. Yeah. And, and, uh, yeah, he apologized before he finished his sentence. He said, Mom, I'm sorry, Mom. Really he good. stopped himself. Let's see if a trip to jail made Daniel think about the consequences of his actions. What? With your choices, this is where you're headed. This is what we call to let you see reality. There. <laughs> He's 18 years old. He's locked up in his jail. He don't know when he's getting out. Are yeah. so you going to make some positive changes? Yes, sir. You going to go home and do what Mama tells you to do? Yes, sir. If I stay here for a month, I will be angry and sad. When I go home, I'm going to the A. I love you, Mom. I wish you didn't take me home right now, but I love you. I love you. I love you, too. <laughs> The ten-year-old Daniel's back here. Oh, wait! So. He didn't want to take these off. Raymond Moses. He says he wants to go with you. <laughs> oh, Dan! No, no, no! I don't want to do. I don't want to. Hey, Daniel! Welcome back. So was it scary going over that jail? Yeah. I bet it was, huh? Can you imagine yeah. having to be there yeah. for who? Hmm? Yes, oh. ma'am. Sorry. Thank you, Raymond. <laughs> so you actually want to thank your mom for bringing you here. She did yesterday. That, that really yeah. got Thanks me you, yesterday. Mom. Yeah. I yeah. put him face to face before I let him go back and mm -hmm. hug his mom when they first seen each other when he was going to jail. I said, you know, if you got anything to tell your mom, tell her right now. And he said, I want to thank you for sending me here. So here's the new Daniel. 
We're very proud of you, Daniel, and all the boys. Very proud of you. When we come back, this 13-year-old admitted that he liked to steal and even sell drugs. What happened when he came face-to-face -face with criminals who got caught for doing the same thing? Stick around to find out. Excuse me? Um, no, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? Shut up. Go ahead! Go ahead! Go ahead, you got me fired up, son! Come on, show me what you got, boy! Show me what you got! Little circles, I said. Little circles. You don't even need to start scrubbing that floor right there. Get that nastiness up. There's no place to be, man. You know what I'm saying? I don't even want to be up. Do you know a preteen who is showing symptoms of being anorexic? Is she already thin for her age? But you hear her comment on how she needs to be even thinner. If you know a preteen who is anorexic and want help, call 1-800-203-2799. You should see it live. To attend a free taping, call 312-836-9485. heard that uh, Daniel wants to be uh, what Ray he wants to do what Raymond does. Is that true? Come on. Yes. No, don't don't stretch it. He says that way. Is that really what you want to do? Wouldn't that be great? He doesn't want to go home with me today. He says he wants to go with with him. You and, could totally do that. To Why not? Children. Don't you think Raymond? <laughs> huh? And you know you know how uh, you know how Raymond got here? He got into the military. You guys, this would be great for you guys to think about the military, you know? And then you can be, you know, police officer, firemen, lots of different things. You know, I, see, I see this had a, bit, a big, very big effect on Daniel. Thank you. I yeah. hope you'll encourage they him to do that because I think that's, that would be best to You know, what would be good is, I mean, there's all kinds of like young marine programs, junior ROTC and stuff like that. Get them involved in uh, like a military structured program and that'll help maintain their self-discipline. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Well, let's talk to Tracy, who brought her 13-year-old son to the show, hoping that some jail time might stop him from becoming a career criminal. First, watch what happened yesterday. Her 13-year-old son runs away, has set a fire in their house, is hanging out with neighborhood gangs. Now, he has an assault charge against him? For yeah, assault battery with a dangerous weapon on <laughs> another child. Did he ever come after you? Um, he came after me. He's giving me a black eye. <gasps> He'll turn around, punch me, kick me, call me names. He says if his mom tries to discipline him, he just pushes her around. Here's 13-year-old Justin. Excuse me? Excuse me? No, I didn't hear you. What you said? Shut up. So you're suspended from school. What'd you do to get suspended? So I sold weed. You sold weed. How did it go for you yesterday? Did you go along on the trip? Yeah, I think yesterday scared him. I mean, yesterday was the first time I heard him tell me he loved me since he was little. Aww. I mean, so he... Well, before we bring him out, let's see what uh, Justin's experience was like behind bars yesterday. We're fixing to see the real world. That's what we're fixing to do. We're fixing to hit the real world. This is what it's going to be. With your choices, this is where you're headed. This is what we call to let you see reality. Now step in your new home. Your new world. Look around here. 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Is this where you want to live? Yes, sir. You got a bait at home, don't you? Yes, sir. Start scrubbing little circles around here. Little circles, I said. Little circles. You don't even need to start scrubbing that floor right there. Get that nastiness up. There's no place to be, man. You know what I'm saying? It's, I don't even want to be here right now, man. I can see it, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, it's like, Get back over there. You want to come out and be a good citizen, be a good son? Yes, oh, Justin's back. Here he is. <laughs> oh, welcome back. So, how do you? How'd it go for you? Gary? Yeah. You gonna do anything different now? 
What are you going to do different? Be good. Be good. And, and not do what? What are you going to stop doing that you were doing? Not sell drugs. All right. That's, a, that's real good. It's really good. What, what would you like to change at home? I've been asking all the boys that, and it's been kind of interesting. What would you like your mom to do differently, or how can things be different at home that would be better for you? Stop yelling at me. Stop yelling. You know, it, it, it doesn't sound like much, but if, that's how, if, that's, if there's a lot of yelling and it seems chaotic in the house, then oh, that's yeah. when it's making him chaotic, too. Are you willing to make that change? And oh, yeah. You know, it starts at home. You guys should be out there, like, giving them positive reinforcement and, you know, giving them activities to get into. It's, every one of them is saying the same thing. My mom yeah, yells at I, me or they I, hit I me or whatever. Him if you to do He's 10 years that. old, though. How could you not control your kid? I would be putting my boot in his well, ass. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They really got a lot from this, too. And all the parents so far, as you've seen, are willing to make some changes, including, we hope, Ernestine, who's actually a grandmother, because yesterday we found out that she was having an extremely difficult time raising her 12 year old grandson. Take a look. Now, this is Ernestine. She says she's afraid that her 12-year-old grandson will end up dead if his behavior doesn't stop. Did he steal your bank card? What happened? Yeah, he took the bank card and went to the bank, and he drew out $760 for his friends. You know, he, he actually hit one of the police officers here today. Really? That? A woman. Uh, he hit a female police officer this morning. He came real close to going to jail. He said he's out of control, and no one can tell him what to do. His 12-year-old, Tristan. <laughs> She's taking you in, she's raising you, she's loving you. Why would you steal from your grandma? The one to... Let me bring out our next guest who was on the same path as today's boys and wound up spending 11 years in prison. Please welcome Robert to our show. <laughs> what would you, what'd you do jail time for? I did for robbery, uh, grand theft. You, you were in a gang? Yeah, I was in a gang. You yeah. were actually asked to stab somebody, right? Yes. Yeah. And you did? Yes. Yeah. You guys think you're tough? You think you're tough? You think you're tough? You don't have friends in prison or in jail. You can't. How do you think it went yesterday? Well, it was a little different last night. He, he was a little different? A little different. Yeah. Here's a look at Tristan's time in cell block at the Harvey, Illinois prison first. The same motion you're making right now is going to be well, you decide to change, you just wait to not live in here no more. But it's your choice. But you lost your freedom. You're behind these walls and they shut these doors. You can't say, well, I'm going to change my way now. Mm -hmm. It's too late. You're stuck in here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, don't be friends you got. Don't be The ones you've been disrespecting, those are the only people that'll be there for you forever. You keep making these poor choices. This is where you're going to be. You understand? Mm -hmm. uh, go. Step it out. Okay, let's get Tristan back out. Tristan. Don't move. Don't You never know the whole story before you people start booing. So Tristan, how was it? How was your experience over there yesterday? Did it, did they get your attention with that jail? It wasn't fun, I'm sure. Was it scary? Yes. Did you feel like you uh, maybe wanted to change some things after that? Well, like that, I really needed to change because that wasn't the place for me because I'm too smart to be here. That's a good. That's a good thinking. <laughs> yeah, Mike. Uh, Mike Williams wants to say something. Okay, so there's a student read it out about four. Now you can't go to I believe a lot of this problem. I think you're doing an outstanding job, especially as a grandmother. So I want to commend you on that. It's hard, it's hard, it's hard. And it's one thing also, you know, Tristan shared with me yesterday on our way to the jail mm -hmm. that his, his mother's passed away. Yeah, we know that. And he, he doesn't have a father in his life. No. His dad is not in his life at all. You know, he needs a positive male role model in his life. Yeah. Well, he needs to get maybe a, a, re a male role model in his life. Can we help you after the show? Yes, Would you, you like that, Tristan? And the way he you needs can. a big brother. A guy that's a big brother. I will. Well, I will. You're from the Bronx, right? Yeah. You're from Bronx, the Bronx? Yeah. If anybody in the Bronx is watching right now, we need a big brother for this young man. And if you'll call us at the show, the number is 312-832-4180. We'd love to, have, to hook you up. And we'll help you after the show also. Maybe yeah. try to find something. Because that, that would really make a big difference. When we come back, we'll see if some hard time was enough to turn around a 10-year-old boy whose violent behavior was tearing his family apart. Stay with us. Wake up, son! Oh, 
you'll be left behind. This is where you're headed, young man, from your negative actions. You understand me? Yes, yes, sir. Go ahead and let the tears out, son. I see them. You don't like it, do you? No, sir. Hey, you want your mama, don't you? What are you looking at, huh? Do you want to make over your teen daughter because she dresses and looks too much like a guy? Does your teen daughter wear such baggy and oversized clothes that she often gets mistaken for a boy? If you want your tomboy teen daughter to look like a girl, call 1-800-203-2799. Okay, we're helping parents of out-of-control young boys. If your child is out of control, you'd like to bring him on our show here. Give us a call at 312-832-4180. I was just between the segments and Quentin walked up and said, you want to say something? You want to say something to one of your cousins? Actually, sorry for what I did. Okay. Good, perfect. perfect. Okay. Time now to talk to Gina. She was here because she fears that her 10-year-old son will find a permanent home in jail if his behavior doesn't stop. Watch this. Question out of me, Gina and her 10-year-old son, uh, Jordan. Now, she says three years of violent behavior from this boy has left her with nowhere to turn. When I was seven months pregnant, he hit me. Oh, um, my. Jordan, he, is that true? Yes. Yeah. He calls me a uh, bastard. Um, his mm -hmm. grandma, his teacher, his principal... He's been suspended more than 12 times from school. He's in the third school this year. Do you know why you're out of control? I want to see my dad. Did you want to see your dad? Mm -hmm. oh. What happened to his dad? Where's his dad? Um, his dad don't want anything to do with him. Let me tell you something. I can't be your dad for you, okay? I can't be your dad for you. But I'll tell you what, I'll do whatever I can for you while you let me work with you, okay? I'll be the best father that I can be to you if you let me do that. Come here. You know what you need. You need another big hug, don't you? Give me a big hug. Come on. Hug me. Come on. So, uh, how, how is he doing today? Um, he was doing really good last night. Yeah. Real good. Are you talking to him differently now? Maybe uh, like yeah. Because it seemed like a lot of yeah. yelling with all of our, uh, all oh, yeah. our cases yesterday. They, they were really good last night. We took three of the boys who went down and ate together. And they all did great. So you think this is the the, the road to uh, yeah. to a better a better son? Well, he said he hated school, but school may seem like a vacation compared to where he went yesterday. Here's Jordan's trip to jail. You look at this thing. That's all you need to do to work with. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Huh? Yes, sir. You thought you had it bad at home, but well, guess what? Guess what? It ain't that bad. Come on, son. Come on, son. Wake up, son. You'll be left behind. This is where you're headed, young man, from your negative actions. You understand me? Yes, sir. Go ahead and let your tears out, son. I see them. You don't like it, do you? Yes, sir. Hey, you want your mama, don't you? I want you to look around this room, and you think about how you're going to be living. You understand? Yes, sir. Start scrubbing good, son. Don't miss a spot, because let me tell you something. When them germs get on you, it's going to eat you up. Hurry up and get that toilet clean, son. Hurry up. Put a little elbow grease into it. The little things add up the big things. You hear that? Uh, and uh, it starts right now with that disrespect, the schoolwork, everything like that. Uh, Today, you got an opportunity to go home with her. Next time, you don't. Ten-year-old Jordan is back. Here he is. Oh, I see a card. Do you have a card in your hand, Jordan? Yes. Who's it for? Raymond Moses. For Raymond? Do you want to come give it to him? He's right here. See? Thank you a lot. Appreciate it. You did a good job yesterday. I'm proud of you, okay? All right? You need to be proud of yourself, too, okay? We're proud of all these boys today. It's just amazing. They come back respectful and... How did it go for you? Was it scary to go into jail? Yes. Yeah, I bet it was, huh? So how do you, are you going to be, what are you going to do differently now after yesterday? Um, stop hanging around the city. Uh-huh. And uh, you want to apologize to anybody for anything? Uh, I'm sorry for the sun thing. Yeah. No more stealing? What would you, uh... <laughs> so, Jordan... Is there a dad in his life? I know his dad. No. So you have no step stepdad? 
Can we, maybe that's, that would help also with Jordan if we can find him a big brother or a mentor or something. Yeah, like and that. Jordan's from Chicago area, right? Yep. But we got a lot of viewers here in Chicago. If you're willing to get involved, would you like to have like a big brother kind of a guy in your life? Wouldn't that be nice? Yes. Yeah. All right. Give us a call. 312-822-4180. Chicago Heights is where they're from. When we come back, we'll revisit a man who was also an out-of-control child, but over a decade in prison turned him around. We'll talk to him next. Your teen being harassed at school or in the neighborhood for being an Arab American. If you feel people are showing prejudice against your teen or your family for being Arab American, call 1-800-203-2799. What the to tell you'd like to be a guest on the Jenny Jones Show? Call us at 1-800-203-2799. Well, speaking of guys who have been in prison, Robert's back with us. He didn't just visit a jail like our teen boys. He actually has done some time. I said earlier, a total of 11 years back and forth. You talk to these guys. Just have sex. What other advice can you give everybody here? Well, no, it is It is a good step, man. I'm really proud of you guys. I mean, I really am. I really am. But, you know, it starts here, but it has to go back home. You know, um, you kids know now, you guys know what wrong and right is. So you guys got to make a decision what you're going to do. But the mothers also, I mean, this is where you guys got to step in. You know, all the hardness of, you know, treating them, you know, it's good to a certain point, but, you know, that intimate relationship, that intimate relationship is what is really needed here. You know, uh, Raymond, you want to say something. In fact, you told me a little bit about this. This is, this is really amazing. Unreal. Yeah, yeah. During, during the commercial break, uh, Daniel came up to me and he said, Raymond Moses, I want you to teach me discipline. Okay? And I said, well, what do you mean by that? He said, he said, I want you to come home with me and teach me discipline. I said, well, you know, I can't come home with you. I got a family, too. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, where do you live so that I can maybe, you know, put out to someone in that area to contact me and we'll get it set up, put him in a little program or like a big mm -hmm. brother thing. He told me, uh, what Lancaster, was it? Lancaster, Lancaster, California. Lancaster, California. Mm -hmm. Well, I said, okay. So, well, Robert came out. We were talking about everything. I said, and I said, I said, you from here? He said, no, I'm from Lancaster, California. <laughs> I said, well, is that not something? Are you going to be his big brother? He said he'd be happy to help I'll out in any that's way that's I can. That's fantastic. That is fantastic. Huh? You want to give your new big brother a hug? He's right here. Yeah, go. Huh? Go over and give him a hug. That's, so, that's fantastic. Just fantastic. <laughs> I can't believe it. That's just amazing. That's amazing. We also boot camped our parents, and here's what we found out when they sat down with Raymond and psychologist Dr. Gene Cirillo. All right, so does anybody have any feedback? You saw your kids go through quite a bit in the last couple of hours. Any reactions? I saw mine crying. I saw a lot of tears. I've never seen him. Really? So he really reacted. It seems like the younger the child is when you bring them into a shock environment like this, showing them what the future could hold for them if they don't shape up, the faster the effect is. With some of the older kids, they've kind of been through juvenile halls, so they're not as shocked. It takes a little longer, but I think all the kids uh, changed somewhat significantly. She kind of gave in so early. You know, well, yeah. kind of scared when he's seen uh, all the other boys coming down. I see oh, how scared they were. It's not easy to watch your kid being disciplined by somebody else or to see them upset. I mean, how many of you had uh, feelings? I was sitting there crying myself. I'm like, I'm not sure. sure. Why? I, it hurts, but you love him so much. He wants. He needs this. I'm like, he needs to be kid. He needs this. He needs this. You know, it's not unusual. The kid right before the show, they usually say, oh, I'm going to tell Raymond Moses off, you know, yeah, I'm going to talk know. back. Yeah, I'm going to kick his butt. And then they get up there, and the drill instructors get in their face, and that's when they start saying, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Where's Mom? And they want Mom immediately, even even the big kids. What I saw with Daniel is he had no power to do with in right. front of Raymond Moses. Right. He yeah. did not control. Yeah. Like, Mom, where are you? Because she was crying for Mom. But sometimes you have to love them enough to let them hate you temporarily, yeah. and it'll be very temporary in order for them to become better people. Dr. Cirillo is next.
Did you and your friends all sleep with the same woman and she became pregnant? Is she claiming the baby is yours, but you believe the father is actually one of your friends? If you want a paternity test to prove you are not the father, call 1-800-203-2799. Ready to end? There's all kinds of great stuff happening on our website. Check us out at JennyJones.com or AOL keyword Jenny Jones. Before we talk to Dr. Cirillo, Jordan, you have a card in your hand. Can you tell us what that is? Wow. Who's it for? For you and the staff. For me and the staff? Oh, wow. what, can you give it to me? Is it like, what? can you tell me what it says a little bit? Yeah, it's because I destroyed the green room. Oh, because you kind of wrecked the green room yesterday, huh? <laughs> okay, well, thank you very much. Thank you. First of all, can I, can I read it? To staff and Jenny Jones, first of all, I want to say thank you for having me on the show. It was a good experience. Also, sorry for messing up the green room and acting up. I will always remember this day. Sincerely, Jordan DeCarlo. Thank you. So sweet. Well, Dr. Jean Cirillo is here. I know you spent some time yesterday with everyone, and uh, gosh, I don't know. In a lot of cases, I did notice one thing, that there were siblings at home, and there were a lot of physical things going on, you know, yeah. and the kids, we heard the kids were beating up their siblings, and then we hear, well, the siblings are beating up these kids. Sometimes what happens is there's one child that we call in psychology the identified patient, and they're seen as the scapegoat of the family. And the siblings pick up on it, as do the kids in school and the neighbors and other people. And whenever anything goes wrong, they know that that child will be blamed. And in a couple of cases, the child had mentioned, you know, get my sisters in trouble once in a while if they pick right, on me right. or discipline them too. So I think the parents have to make an agreement now that we're starting off new and that this child is no longer going to be the one who's picked on. And I noticed that too with you, that you spoke kind of negatively, that you're already setting him up to uh, go back to bad behavior when he comes home. You said, I expect that he's going to go back to his ways. He's going to be feeling. He's going to be doing bad things. You have to set off with the idea that you expect that now that they've been through the boot camp, and they've been through the jail, that they are going to go back and try and follow the rules. And on the parents' part, you're going to start off anew. This is going to be, as Raymond always says, the first day of the rest of mm -hmm. your life. Yeah. Because... A lot, of, a lot of these stories, there was a lot of yelling. We saw the tapes yesterday, a lot of yelling in the house, and a lot of kids just simply said, I, I don't want them to yell at me. And really, it is about positive reinforcement. I know Raymond talks about it all the time. Yes, but, yes. but can you give us like an example? I, I don't want to put you on the spot, but if something that you might be doing one way that you could change, like if you want your son to do, if you want your child to do something, right? what's the wrong way and the right way to well, ask? Well, I mean, the wrong way is to say, you know, you're a slob, clean your room. The right way is to say, I expect the room to be clean by such and such a time. If it is clean, then you can go out or to set up some kind of a positive consequence for doing the right thing rather than always having negative what, consequences. What about a reward? Would a reward be? A po yes, a reward, something that the child wants. And, you know, everybody says, why should I have to bribe my kid to do things? But we all get bribed to work, to do the right thing. We get something positive. Maybe that's how you earn an allowance is by, by exactly. doing Exactly. Right. And just one more word about positive reinforcement, because I see it, you see it when you're out in the stores and you see parents, you know, chastising their kids, you're stupid, don't do that. How important that is. To right. We should never take the positive for granted. We're so quick to criticize the negative. We really should spend that energy rewarding the positive. Great, great. We'll take a break and be back. How to have I oh, Her T-shirt looks as good as new which may or may not be a good thing. Well, we want to thank the Harvey, Illinois Jail for allowing us access over there for this show, which would, was very, very helpful. Dr. Cirillo, thank you very much, especially for participating over the two days and helping out. Thanks, Robert. You got, we got our new big brother here for yeah. Daniel with Robert. And uh, Mike Williams, Terry Canty, and Raymond Moses, of course. And Raymond, a couple things. First of all, how can people reach you? All right. Yeah, the best way to reach us is, you know, World Wide Web, right there, the Internet. Mm -hmm. It has our website. has all the information about my program and the different programs that we run. They can email me. I answer. I get hundreds and hundreds of emails, but guess what? I answer every one of them myself. Okay? Can you, can you get I the do. volunteers yeah. something to do? And, and they can give me, you know, if someone emails me with all their contact information, emails, phone numbers, address, I can get with people where they live at 
and maybe even if I'm running a boot camp in their area, great. maybe they can help me out great. during that time. Thanks, so. Raymond. This was All great. Right. I, I really was, we're so proud of you guys, really, for this. You are great role models today for other kids. We hope you'll uh, keep it up, keep up the good work. And don't forget, we're looking for a couple of mentors in the Bronx and here in the Chicago Heights area. So please be sure and call us. Thank you all for watching.